The CV90105 TML is a top tier premium tank available in the Swedish tech tree. With its high mobility, second generation thermal optics and potent gun, this tank has certainly made a name for itself on the battlefields. But are the positives worth the tank's high price tag? Alright lads, today I'm going to be talking about the performance, weapons and playstyle of the CV90105. Starting as always with the basics, the CV90105 is a rank 6 battle rating 9.0 light tank located in the Swedish tech tree. Being a rank 6 premium, it will be effective at researching between the ranks of 1 and 7, allowing you to grind every vehicle in the Swedish tech tree with this tank. To unlock the CV, you'll first have to purchase it in a pack on the Guardian store. For a price of 60 euros, you get the tank, 2000 golden eagles and 15 days of premium time. Going on to the rewards, the CV has a base RP modifier of 2.26, which gives you an RP modifier of 452% with a free to play account, and 678% with a premium account. With a base silver line modifier of 1.4, you have the same silver line modifier as the other top tier premiums. You can expect a 280% silver line modifier with a free to play account, and 420% with a premium account. If you'd like to know more about this tank, and whether it's as OP as everyone says it is in general chat, then stick around for the rest of the video. The CV90 is powered by the Scania DSi 14 engine, producing 550 horsepower. Combined with the vehicle's weight of 21.9 tons, this engine gives the vehicle a power to weight ratio of 25.1 horsepower per ton. This engine power gives the CV90 an incredible amount of mobility. This power, combined with the addition of neutral steering, allows you to quickly navigate tight terrain and obstacles, as well as incredible acceleration, both forwards and reverse. The CV90 is able to reach a top speed of 70 km per hour. Combined with the aforementioned great acceleration, your performance is on par, if not greater than most main battle tanks, even in a full up tier to battle rating 10.0. This light tank also has a high reverse speed of 43 km per hour, allowing you to quickly retreat and reposition if shit hits the fan. Overall, I have no issues with the performance of this light tank. Its mobility allows it to get into early game defensive positions, and even in a full up tier, you can still keep up with the main battle tanks. Being a light tank, the armour of the CV90 is naturally thin, and in my opinion, one of the biggest weaknesses of this vehicle. On top of the thin armour, this vehicle also has hull brake mechanics, meaning your vehicle can be knocked out even if all your crew members are still alive. To test the armour of this tank, we will be using the DM23 round, fired at a range of 100 metres. Starting as always with the lower frontal plate, the base of the plate is 34mm thick and drops down to 24mm as you approach the top. Moving upwards towards the upper frontal plate, although heavily sloped at 75 degrees, you still only get 64mm of protection at the base of the plate, increasing up to around 77mm at the top of the plate. The side of the vehicle has a constant arm thickness of only 6mm, which leaves you incredibly vulnerable to pretty much every heavy machine gun in the game. So even if you knock out the breach of an enemy, if he has a coax or pintle mounted machine gun, he still poses a threat to you. The rear of the vehicle is surprisingly thicker at 21mm, although it is still not enough to provide any real protection. Moving back to the turret, as we move the cursor across the turret face, we can see that the thickness of the cheeks are around 77mm, and the main centre of the turret dropping down in thickness to around 42mm worth of protection. The side of the turret is thinner again, averaging roughly 37mm worth of protection, and finally, the turret rear is only 27mm thick. Overall, the armour of the CV90 is pretty much useless. You are vulnerable to every gun in the game, and can't even utilise angling to increase your effective protection due to the hull break mechanics. While the lack of armour is certainly annoying, especially seeing as you are dying a single hit most of the time, the tank is not designed to be a brawler. If you can use a previously mentioned great mobility, and a little bit of skill and map knowledge, you can have just as much of an effect on the outcome of a game as an equally tiered main battle tank. The CV90 is armed with the 105mm CN105 G2 cannon. It has a good 7 degrees of gun depression and the standard 20 degrees of gun elevation. You can carry 40 rounds in total, with 12 of those rounds being classed as first stage ammunition. The gun is housed in a turret capable of rotating at 21 degrees per second with a stock crew, and 30 degrees per second with an ace crew. While this traverse rate is better than average, it is still quite lacking when compared to several equally tiered main battle tanks. However, I didn't find it to be much of an issue. You get access to both thermal optics and night vision, something which substantially increases your lethality, as it allows you to easily acquire and identify targets on maps with poor visibility, something I found incredibly useful when playing sim battles. The CV90 gets access to second generation thermal imaging, meaning the resolution is much higher when compared to first generation thermals. 
You get access to thermal vision in both your gunner's sight and the commander's view, giving you superb hunter kill capabilities. Like most of the NATO 105mm guns, you have a base reload rate of 8.7 seconds, which can be brought down to 6.7 seconds with an ace qualification. This reload rate is identical to most of the NATO tanks on the battlefield and around average for the battle rating 9.0. The stock round of this vehicle is the M735 APFSDS round. It has a rather high muzzle velocity of 1501 meters per second and can penetrate 353 millimeters of armor at 10 meters. This is an early APFSDS round and it isn't very effective against angled armor. While usable at battle rating 9.0, if you find yourself in an up tier to 10.0, the stock round of this vehicle becomes quite ineffective. Luckily, as this vehicle is a premium, you don't need to use the stock round as you have several other rounds available. The first round is the DM-12 Heater Fast Shell, travelling at 1173 meters per second and capable of penetrating 400mm of flat armour. This ammo is certainly an incredibly powerful multi-purpose round. While this shell is perfectly usable for the majority of enemies you will meet, some opponents with composite armour may give you trouble. You also have access to the DM-502 Hess Shell. It travels much slower at only 732 meters per second and has much less penetration at only 127 millimeters. While Hesh is useful against lightly armored targets, I believe that the Heat of Hesh Shell performs far better in this role. The final and best performing round is a DM-23 APFSDS Shell. This round weighs 3.8 kilograms, travels at 1,455 meters per second and is capable of penetrating 337mm of flat armour. But where it really excels is its penetration of angled armour. It can still penetrate 195mm of armour angled at 60 degrees. And even at extreme ranges, the DM-23 round is able to penetrate 306mm of armour at 2000m. Talking of long range engagements, you also have a laser range finder, which gives you a precise distance to target in ground realistic battles, as well as an auto laying ranging system in sim battles. As well as your main gun, you have a single rifle caliber machine gun mounted coaxially, as well as 14 smoke grenades which fire 7 at a time. Overall, just like the mobility section, I have no real complaints about the firepower department. Your gun is more than capable of destroying the overwhelming majority of all the vehicles you'll meet, and the ammunition available to you is still effective even in an up tier. Your second gen thermal optics make you deadly in realistic and sim battles, but your lack of armour is less important as long as you use proper positioning and tactics. Due to this vehicle having no armour, it isn't really important to take a small amount of ammunition to avoid an ammo cook-off, so feel free to load whatever rounds you want, but I typically take around 15 DM23 rounds. At the start of a game, you want to use your great mobility to flank opponents. When sitting on a flank, you can use your great gun to knock out opponents with minimal risk to yourself. You can also assist the team by flanking, as a CV90-105 has the ability to scout opponents. Just remember that your biggest advantage is your mobility, so always try and relocate after a firefight is over. Don't try to trade shots with other tanks. Whilst your gun is capable of dealing with them, most main battle tanks are usually more survivable than you, and typically survive a first hit, whereas the CV90 is typically a one-shot kill. If enemies start returning fire, retreat and relocate. Naturally, this flanking tactic works best on larger maps in War Thunder. On smaller maps where flanking isn't really an option, maps like Advance of the Rhine or the new Sweden map, you should instead utilise a great speed of this vehicle but get yourself in a strong anchor position instead of a flanking position. From here just let the opponents come to you. Alternatively, you can stay close to your friendly main battle tanks and simply harass the enemies that they engage. I'd say that rushing cap circles at the beginning of a game is pretty much a waste of this vehicle's capabilities. The weak armour leaves you incredibly vulnerable to artillery and unless you can reliably get one shot kills, trying to brawl with several enemy main battle tanks on a cap is going to get you a one way trip back to the hangar. In terms of lineups, the CV90 is a little out of luck, with no other Swedish vehicle being that effective at battle rating 9.0. The only other equally tiered Swedish vehicle is the LVR BV701 anti-air missile carrier. While this is effective in its role as an anti-aircraft vehicle, it isn't something you can rely on as a backup vehicle if your CV90 gets knocked out. Apart from the LVR, all of the other vehicles in your lineup will be lower battle ratings, which is an issue if you get up tier to battle rating 10.0. Fighting top tier main battle tanks with battle rating 8.3 vehicles is not fun. The only other tank that is somewhat usable in this lineup is the Stritzwagen 103C, but that has fairly bad hull aiming mechanics, giving it pretty poor performance. Apart from the Stritzwagen 103, you can take the PVR BV551 anti tank missile carrier. While being effective at knocking out tanks with its 15 degrees of gun depression, it is an incredibly passive tank. In terms of close air support, you can bring along the A32A with a selection of ground attack loadouts. Alternatively, the J29D is also a good cast point with its 14 M49 rockets. 
To conclude, the CV9105 is an incredibly capable tank at battle rating 9.0. It has amazing mobility with equally good gun performance due to its ammunition, laser rangefinder and second generation of thermal optics. While most people would say that the biggest downside of this vehicle is its lack of armour, I generally say that the biggest drawback of the CV90 is its lack of an effective lineup. The other tanks in your lineup at 9.0 are incredibly passive and don't really fit the meta. While not an issue if you manage to survive the entire game in the CV90, the average player will maybe get 2 kills and then die. After you have used your spawn in the CV, you don't really have any other vehicle to earn silver lines and research points in your lineup. This really does limit the grinding potential of this tank. For example, the reason the Leopard L44 is such a good premium is because the Germans have several other great tanks at battle rating 9.0, which gives you several spawns in highly capable tanks. This is not the case for the CV90 in the Swedish tech tree, and it leaves you feeling frustrated after several games fighting top tier opponents in battle rating 8.3 vehicles. And in my opinion, a good premium tank is a vehicle you can play without getting stressed. Because of the lack of a lineup and the high price tag of 60 euros, I can't really recommend this tank to players. I want to make it clear that the performance of the CV90 is great, it's a fantastic little light tank, and it is definitely powerful in the current meta of the game. But I just feel like you won't be satisfied with this tank after spending such a large amount of money on it. If you have a lot of free money and want a powerful little light tank, then sure the CV90 105 is potent and effective, but for players who don't have much disposable income, especially in the current financial downturn, I recommend people save their money for the future War Thunder May sales. As always, I hope you found this video useful lads, and thank you very much for watching.